Okay, we're going to look at how to solve quadratic equations by factoring. In order to solve quadratic equations by factoring, we first have to know the zero product property. The zero product property says if you have two things that multiply to give you zero, so if A times B is zero, then we know that one of these has to be zero. So either A is zero or B is zero. So we're going to actually use this product when we're solving quadratic equations by factoring. So let's jump in and do some examples. Right. Example one, we're going to solve x squared minus 8x equals 0. And if we want to solve it by factoring, then the first thing we have to do is we have to factor. So how can we factor this? Well, the first thing we want to do is look for a greatest common factor. There is a greatest common factor here, and it is an x. Both of these have an x in common, so you can pull out an x. If you pull out an x here, you're left with an x. And if you pull out an x here, you're left with a minus 8. And so now we have factored, and we have the x times x minus 8 equals 0. Well, this is where the zero product property comes into play. You have two things that multiply to give you 0. That means one of those things have to be zero. So either x is zero or x minus eight is zero. Or they both can be zero. But if x is zero or x minus eight is zero, then that will make this equation up here true. So we need to figure out what does x need to be in order to make that zero. So here, x is already solved for x equals zero. So if x is zero, then this whole thing will equal zero. But here we would need to solve for x. So we will add 8 to both sides. And we will get x equal to 8. Either x is 0 or x is 8. Either one of those numbers will make that equation, the original equation, true. All right, example 2. We want to solve n squared plus 5n equal to 24. And so recall in the video earlier where we talked about what a quadratic equation is, we said that a quadratic equation was something of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. There had to be a uh, equal sign, one variable, and a high exponent of two. And all of that exists here. There's an equal sign, there's one variable in, and the highest exponent on that variable is two. The only thing that's missing here is that it's not in this form. And to be in this form, it has to have zero on one side. So whenever you solve your quadratic equations, you want to get zero on one side. So I'm going to move the 24 over to get zero over here. So 24 minus 24 is zero. I cannot combine, even though I have it underneath here, I can't combine those two because this one has an n and this one doesn't have an n. So that'll just be n squared plus 5n minus 24. So we have a quadratic equation, and we want to solve it by factoring. So we need to factor the left side of the equal sign. So in order to factor the left side, there is no variable or there is no coefficient in front of n squared, or there's an understood coefficient of 1. So our leading coefficient is 1. So we will have to take factors of the c term, which is negative 24, that add to the b term which is 5. So you want two numbers that multiply to give you negative 24, but adds to give you 5. So I created this chart so you could just start listing factors of 24. Well, 6 times 4 is 24, but since it's negative, one of those has to be negative. So um, I'll put the negative on a 6. But when I add those together, negative 6 plus 4, I get negative 2. So I want it to be 5, so those aren't the factors I'm looking for. So what about 8 times 3? 8 times 3 is 24. It has to be negative, so I'll stick the negative on the 8. When I add negative 8 plus 3, I get negative 5. So almost what I want, but the sign is different. So I'm going to go and I'm going to switch the signs. I'm going to make the 8 positive and the 3 negative. And when I add 8 and negative 3, I get a positive 5. So these are the factors that I want, 8 and negative 3. So my answer is simply n plus 8, n minus 3. Not my answer to the whole problem, but my answer to factoring that expression on the left side. 
So now I have two things that multiply to give me zero. So because of the zero product property, one of those expressions has to be zero. So either n plus eight is zero or n minus three is zero. And so we need to figure out, because the whole purpose of solving this, is to figure out what n has to be to make this equation true. So we need to figure out what does n need to be to make these zero. So subtract eight from both sides. You get n equal to negative eight and add three to both sides and you get n equal to three. So you get two answers, n equal negative eight and n equal three. Either one of those answers will make this original equation true. And if you don't believe me, you can go back and plug them in. So plug in, so just say three for example. Three squared is nine, five times three is 15. Nine plus 15 is 24. So it makes, these answers make that equation true when you plug them back in for the variable. Example three. We want to solve 6x squared plus 7x equal to 3. And as mentioned in the last example, whenever you're solving a quadratic equation, you want to get 0 on one side. So I need to move this 3 over to the other side. And although I have minus 3 written under the 7x, I cannot combine those because one has an x on it and the other one doesn't. So that ends up being 6x squared plus 7x minus 3 equals 0. And so I want to solve this by factoring. So in order to factor, I have a coefficient that's not one in the front. So I need to multiply a times c. a is the number in front of x squared, which is 6. c is negative 3. And I get a times c is negative 18. And I want factors of negative 18 that add to 7. So if you're completely lost at what I'm doing, then you need to stop this video right here. You need to go check out the video, factoring trinomials with a leading coefficient not equal to one. Or if you were lost in example two, you need to watch the video of factoring trinomials with a leading coefficient of one. So you need to go back and work on the factoring piece in order to truly understand this right here. So you want to find factors you want to find factors of negative 18, two numbers that multiply to give you negative 18, but add to give you seven. So just start listing factors of 18. And since it has to be a negative 18, stick a negative on one of those. So negative six times three is negative 18. But when you add those, you get a negative three. So those aren't the factors I want. What about nine and two? Stick the negative on the nine Negative nine times two is negative 18, but when I add those, I get a negative seven, and I actually want a positive seven. So I'm going to switch the signs, make the nine positive and the two negative. Now when I add those, I get a positive seven. So these are the factors that I want. So my answer will look like this, x plus nine, x minus two, However, since there was a coefficient in the front of six, I'm going to divide each of these by six. And so I'm going to simplify these. So nine over six can be reduced by three because three go into the top and the bottom. So if I divide nine by three, I get three. If I divide six by three, I get two. And two over six can be reduced by two. Two go into the top and the bottom. So if I divide two by two, I get one. If I divide six by two, I get three. So now we have two things that multiply to give you zero. Now you can apply the zero product property. One of those things have to be zero. So either x plus three half is zero or x minus one third is zero. And then solve for x. What does x have to be in order for that to be zero? Subtract so three halves x equal to negative three halves and add one third it's over here and you get x equal to positive one third so your two answers would be x equal negative three half and x equal to positive one third okay now i want you to try this one see if you can solve 5x squared minus 3x minus 2 equal to zero so pause it for a moment 
and try to work this one out. Solve this quadratic equation by factoring. Okay, so the first thing you should do is multiply A times C. So 5 times negative 2, which is negative 10. So you want factors of negative 10 that add to negative 3. So just start listing factors of 10. So 5 and 2, if I stick the 5, the negative on the 5, negative 5 times 2 gives me negative 10. And when I add those together, that gives me negative 3. So those are the factors that I want. So this will factor into x minus 5 and x plus 2. And I'm leaving a little space underneath because I had a coefficient that was not 1, which means I need to go and divide each of those by this number. Divide each of these by 5 <clears throat> because that is the leading coefficient. So you get 5 over 5, which is 1. And 2 fifths cannot be simplified, so you just leave it as 2 fifths. So now you have where you need to use the zero product property. You have two things that multiply to give you zero. So that means one of these have to be zero. So you set them both equal to zero. So x minus 1 equal to zero, and x plus 2 fifths equals zero. And then you solve both of those for x. So add 1 here to both sides. You get x equal to 1 and subtract 2 fifths here from both sides and you get x equal to negative 2 fifths. So you get two answers, x equal to 1 and x equal to negative 2 fifths. Did you get that? Hopefully you got it. If not, go back, walk through the steps and see if you have any questions. If your issue is with factoring, you want to go back and review the factoring videos. And also, um, yeah, just go through. And if you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comments below. And make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. Um, Till next time, check out the next video, which is quadratic, solving quadratic equations using the square root property.